I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ghana. Mr. President, I join previous speakers in thanking the Secretary General for his excellent report on the responsibility to protect. We are encouraged by the focus of the report on early warning and means of strengthening early action through a threefold strategy and approach to the implementation of the R2P. My delegation aligns itself with the statement delivered by the permanent representative of Qatar on behalf of the group of friends of the responsibility to protect. Mr. President, it would be recalled that Ghana and Australia called for the inclusion of this subject on the agenda of the General Assembly and the formalization of our debate on this important principle by reason of our conviction that sincere and transparent dialogue devoid of dramatization would allow for consensus building on the R2P. From the onset, I wish to reiterate Ghana's view that the principle of R2P remains relevant, both as an expression of political commitment and as a blueprint for action to prevent and end genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. We support the framework for implementation of the R2P based on the three equal and mutually reinforcing pillars of the principle, namely the primary obligation of states to protect their population, the collective responsibility of the international community in these efforts, as well as strategies to ensure timely and decisive collective responses necessary to effectively meet the laudable objectives of the principle in accordance with the United Nations Charter. Ghana believes that implementation of the responsibility to protect through enhanced national, regional, and global collaboration on effective preventive strategies would contribute to prioritizing the UN's prevention agenda and strengthen accountability for atrocity crimes. We endorse the position that the pace of implementation can be improved through strengthened mechanisms for accountability across the legal, moral, and political spheres, together with clearly defined relationships between the three faces of the principle. My delegation also finds merit in the Brazilian initiative of, of responsibility while protecting, as it provides clarity in the implementation strategy of R2P, particularly in relation to accountability and transparency. Going by the most recent developments, this already appears to be a direction that promises desired outcomes in the implementation of the R2P. Building resilience at the community, national, regional, and global levels involves developing functional institutions of good governance at all levels. These should necessarily be anchored in a robust human rights regime and driven by the principles of local ownership, transparency, dialogue, and inclusiveness, respect for diversity, accountability, equity, rule of law, and solidarity. In addition to these, building stability and resilience in transitional societies would also presuppose a cautious and deliberate balance between retributive and restorative justice. In our view, good governance guarantees national stability and peace, which are authentic marks of state sovereignty. Mr. President, my delegation shares the view that regional and sub-regional arrangements can help to further develop capacities for early warning and assessment of atrocity crimes through a review of their current response capacities and the support they give to their respective member states. We wish to stress in this regard that national ownership of regional strategies is a sine qua non 
for sustainable and transforming R2P action. We have learned from situations that have played out in parts of Africa and the Middle East that acts of omission or commission at the national and regional levels are critical in determining whether prevention and robust ex post facto intervention will be effective or undermined. It is worthy of mention that the African Union at its 50th anniversary summit in 2013 in Addis Ababa undertook to promote a holistic and systematic approach towards attaining the 2020 target of a conflict-free Africa. African states have therefore committed to the speedy implementation of existing instruments of human rights, rule of law, democracy, elections, and good governance. The conflict prevention strategic framework of ECOWAS under implementation since 2007 and the Monrovia Declaration on the Development of Capacity in Mediation Efforts are also particularly relevant in this regard. Mr. President, Ghana is deeply appreciative of its continued partnership with like-minded countries, and I name a few, including Australia, Italy, Qatar, Denmark, Rwanda, France, Costa Rica, and Finland, in promoting national and regional ownership and implementation of the R2P. We commend the Joint Office of the Secretary General Special Advisors for Genocide Prevention and the Responsibility to Protect, the Global Center for R2P, the International Coalition for R2P for their support and active engagement with member states and regional organizations, and call for their cooperation in the development of options to enhance early warning and early action. Ghana places great importance with collaboration with civil society as strategic partners in R2P implementation. In our national experience, nonpartisan support in favor of CSO initiatives by various political parties and parliament helped in the creation of Ghana's National Peace Council as an independent state institution of mediation and peace facilitation. The National Peace Council today is an important part of Ghana's governance and peace architecture, as well as a key component of relevant strategic partnerships forged with bilateral, regional, and global institutions. The complementarity of the different pillars of governance and peace infrastructure and their interactive nature came into play during the Supreme Court hearing of Ghana's presidential election petition in 2012. The hearing and its outcome demonstrated the role of the judiciary as an important pillar of governance and peace in promoting the rule of law and in the protection of electoral integrity. Other national institutions that played a critical role in the process included the Independent Electoral Commission, the Interparty Advisory Committee, the Executive through its National Security Council, traditional authorities, and the National Peace Council, as well as the National Commission for Civic Education and faith-based institutions. Clearly, building capacity for good governance and peace should encompass all institutions in the business of development, institutions in the area of constitution building, rule of law, accountability oversight, as well as independent watchdog and advocacy agencies. We wish to stress that capacity building in prevention at the community and national levels must be prioritized, together with effective mobilization of the requisite resources for effective implementation of R2P. Mr. President, in closing, my delegation wishes to call on member states to declare their support for the R2P and to allow for all views to be considered in the preparation of the report and outcome of this debate. Finally, the combined effect of responsibility to protect, responsibility while protecting, and responsibility to remember should help us make progress in preventing and ending genocide war crimes and crimes against humanity and to building
resilience. I thank you. I thank the representative of Ghana.